Welcome to week two. We're on chapter three today, or this week rather. Stakeholders and corporate social responsibility. The purpose of this chapter is to expose the student to the interact interconnection between stakeholder theory and corporate social responsibility in ethical decision making. Our learning points are going to be, you know, talking about the stakeholder. We're going to talk about uh, what makes a stakeholder important. Uh, I'm going to talk about the four roles through which the stakeholders impact organizations. What is the role of employees as stakeholders? We're going to explain how the role of customers uh, as stakeholders affects the business. And of course, the role of the community as a whole. So there's a few points that we want to talk about this week. First thing, uh, let's talk about the stakeholder. Let's describe what a stakeholder is. Well, a stakeholder is a person or group or organization that has an interest or a concern in an organization. Stakeholders are those who may be affected by or have an effect on an effort by that organization. They might include people who have strong interest uh, in the effort for academic, for uh, philosophical, or even political reasons. Even though they and their families, friends and associates, are not directly affected by it. One way to characterize uh, stakeholders is by their relationship to the effort, um, whatever it is. Uh, you have your primary stakeholders. These are people or groups that stand to be directly affected, either positively or negatively, by an effort uh, of the actions of that agency, institution, organization, whatever type of uh, business it is. In some cases, they're the primary stakeholders on both sides of the equation. A regulation that benefits one group may have a negative effect on another. Uh, a rent control policy, for example, benefits tenants, but financially it might hurt the landlords. Secondary stakeholders are people or groups that are indirectly affected either positively or negatively, by the effort of that business or organization. Uh, a program to reduce domestic violence, for instance, could have a positive effect on the uh, emergency room personnel by reducing the number of cases they see. Uh, it might require more training for police to help them handle domestic violence calls in a different way. But both of these groups will be secondary stakeholders. Then we have key stakeholders. Uh, key stakeholders are those who might belong to either or neither of the first two groups. So in other words, they could be in the first two groups or not at all. And are those who have a positive or negative effect on an effort or who are important within the organization, uh, agency, or institution that's engaged in that effort. And I keep using the word effort because we, we have kind of an unknown. Whatever they're doing uh, has an effect. Uh, the director of an organization might be an obvious key stakeholder. But so would a line staff. Those who work directly with the participants carry out the work of the effort. Uh, if they don't believe in what they're doing and don't do well, they might as well not have begun at all. Other examples of key stakeholders might be people that are people or organizations that fund uh, elected or appointed uh, government officials, heads of business, uh, clergy, and other community figures who wield a significant amount of influence. Stakeholders can affect or be affected by the organization's actions, their objectives, and their policies. 
for example, uh, stakeholders are creditors, directors, employees, government and its agencies, owners and their stakeholders, suppliers, unions, and the community from which that business draws its resources. Not all of the shareholders are equal. A company's customers are entitled to what we call fair trading practices, but are not entitled to the same consideration as the company's employees. An example of a negative impact on the shareholders is when a company needs to cut costs and plans to round off, uh, excuse me, a round of layoffs. Um, this negatively affects the community of workers in the area and therefore it'll have an effect on the community itself, their, their economy. Someone owning shares in a business such as Microsoft is positively affected, for example, when the company releases a new device. The company sees profit and then the stock prices rise. Now let's see what makes a stakeholder important. Think about it. The relative importance of these various stakeholders is based on the belief that there are contingency attributes and could require more attention by the manager. The role of power is really a two-edged sword. Uh, just as the business can exercise power over the stakeholders. In reverse, so can the stakeholders over the business. Stakeholders who have the legal power to sue and legally disrupt the operations of a firm based on unethical activities in the firm. This leads to a concept of legitimacy. Stakeholders have that vested interest to monitor the activities of, of the firm or business since they're directly impacted by its activities. As a result, shareholders can ensure that the activities of that firm or business are legitimate. Urgency is usually based on the usual, uh, excuse me, usually crisis, uh, based on usually crisis activities which must be resolved within a set time period. As a result, a strike by the workers of a firm increase that level of importance of the employees as a share, uh, stakeholder since it directly impacts the current operations of the firm. So in other words, uh, the employees become more important because it's affecting the firm or business. And you remember earlier, we said that the business could uh, have that uh, uh, exercise of power over the uh, employees. Well, the employees, in this instance, are exercising a power over the business. Okay, we have uh, four roles through which share, uh, stakeholders impact organizations. And you'll be able to read these uh, in, uh, in your book. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, firstly, stakeholders establish expectations, explicit or implicit, uh, about corporate performance. The cha uh, challenge occurs when the expectations of the stakeholders do not coincide with the expectations of the firm whether it's uh, treatment of the employees, the financial performance, uh, or the type of suppliers who provide the raw materials. There's always the potential for disconnect between the expectations of the stakeholders and management. Uh, secondly, stakeholders experience the effects of uh, corporate behaviors by definition, stakeholders will be directly impacted by the behavior of the firm since they have a vested interest in the operations. As a result, 
the stakeholders will try to ensure that their needs are satisfied by the actions of the business or firm. Thirdly, uh, the stakeholders evaluate the effects of the corporate behaviors on their interests or uh, they'll reconcile the effects of those behaviors with their expectations. As a continuance of uh, number two, we can say if say, uh, stakeholders believe their needs are not being satisfied, they'll either try to make the firm adjust their actions or they'll adjust their expectations concerning what are acceptable actions. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there may be some adjustment on the uh, stakeholders' part or the employees. Uh, fourth, uh, stakeholders act upon the their interests, uh, their expectations, their experiences, and their evaluations. Uh, this is uh, the most comprehensive and therefore the most difficult stakeholders' actions to anticipate from the uh, business's perspective. By relying on their interests, expectations, experiences, and evaluation. There's uh, a potential for large gaps in the uh, perceptions of the stakeholders and the perceptions of the firm. So they're not going to agree equally. So there's going to be a little gap or sometimes a large gap. Um, since the two stakeholders the business and the employees or whomever, uh, could have varying interests. Uh, they could have different expectations, experiences, evaluations. There could, uh, as I said, always be that contingency uh, or for inconsistencies as uh, considered to be serving the needs. So uh, you can say, therefore, uh, the axiom, you can't be all things to all people applies in that it would be impossible to satisfy all the expectations of every stakeholder. So the firms uh, have to use utilitarian philosophy by trying to serve the greatest good for the greatest number of stakeholders. Uh, and it we find in our daily lives, you know, the same uh, thing, axiom, the axiom that you can't uh, be all things to all people. Uh, we say you can't please everyone all the time or everyone every time. So it kind of uh, follows life. What's the role of the employees as stakeholders? Think about it. Uh, there's a, a, a large uh, widespread agreement that employees, and I'll use the term we when I say employees, uh, are prime stakeholders. Although top management may set the overall strat, uh, strategic direction for the company, the employees are responsible for carrying out the tasks specified in the company's strategic plan in an efficient manner. Employees are the soldiers in the trenches, and therefore uh, employees are closest to the action of the company. They interact with customers on a daily basis in a manufacturing environment. They work directly with the company's products. The company's success depends in large measure on the skill and dedication of its employees. Without the employees performing their roles proficiently, the company will not reach its revenue or profit goal, or even their potential. Let's explain the role of customers as uh, stakeholders. 
Okay, let's say that the company you work for wants uh, to produce a new product. We want to know how are the customer users involved? Well, the customers or users, we can use those interchangeably. Uh, the customers or the users of that uh, product, the project seeks to produce. Uh, comprise the business units that identify the need for the product or service the project will develop. In other words, the customers said we need this and so the project is to produce that and give it to you. Uh, we have customers that uh, can be from any level of organization from executive director, president to entry-level clerk uh, since it's frequently not feasible for all customers to be directly involved in the project, the following rules are leveraged. To listen to these rules. Customer representatives are members of the customer community who are identified and made available to the project for their subject matter expertise. Sometimes we call this subject matter expert or SMEs. The responsibility is to accurately represent their business unit's needs to the project team and to evaluate or validate the uh, deliverables that describe the product or service that the project will produce. Customer representatives are also expected to bring back to the commu uh, customer community the information about the project. <clears throat> Toward the end of the project, Customer representatives will test the product or the service the project is developing, using and evaluating it while providing feedback to the project team. Uh, have you ever been in the <coughs> excuse me mall, and uh, you have those people come up to you and ask if they could ask you a few questions and offer to pay you five dollars? Uh, what they're doing is asking you questions. Uh, about products and this is one of the ways they gauge uh, the desire for that product in the community and how the community feels about the products. Uh, customer decision makers are those members of the customer community who have been designated to make project decisions on behalf of major business units. units. Uh, and they'll use or will be affected by the product or service the project will deliver. Customer decision makers are members of the POM, uh, responsible for achieving consensus of their business unit on project issues and outputs, and communicating all that information back to the project team. Uh, they attend project meetings, as requested, they review and approve uh, process deliveries and provide subject material expertise to the project team. On some projects, they may also serve as customer representatives. Therefore, after having said all of this, we know the consumer is an important stakeholder. Now let's talk about, lastly, uh, the uh, role of the community as stakeholders. Okay, the community itself has a strong interest in protecting both the interests of the workers, its residents of the community, and the very uh, viability and success of the employer. Uh, the business comes in and they bring in jobs, don't they? Uh, the community wants those jobs to be successful, so they're going to make sure, or at least try to make sure, that that business survives, is viable, and has a success. Because if the business is, is successful, that means that the community itself is strong within the business. In other words, the, uh, their, the business's employees or members of the community are making money, they're going to work every day, uh, 
they're helping produce products that the community can use. Um, if uh, public money is used in the study, then the use of tax revenues may also be an issue. Local press and news agencies can be an important ally or foe uh, early in the study process by raising issues and informing the community of the purpose, risks, and benefits of a successful worker study. Um, and we all know how the uh, media is. I mean, the media can make you or break you. And just one, we're using we just one little instance. Um, some of the interests and concerns that uh, are applicable to the public and the community at large are uh, things like protection of workers as members of the community, uh, appropriate use of tax uh, payer dollars, loss of employment and tax revenue availability. But they also have some responsibilities and some responsibilities of the public and the community are uh, providing members for institutional review boards or IRBs. Um, these IRBs are tasked with the oversight of reviewing and protecting the interests of health study worker subjects from uh, initial planning to completion of the study. So uh, when worker in health studies are reviewed, the IRB should include among its membership or uh, as a consultant, uh, a worker representative as well as an independent member not affiliated with any of the stakeholders. Someone that doesn't have anything to do uh, with the company will receive nothing uh, from it. They need to be knowledgeable about uh, issues, concerns, and appropriate regulations relating to the study that they're, uh, that's going on. They really need to be involved and to make sure that everything falls through and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, everything is uh, done in a uh, fashion that is, is ethical. Uh, we've covered uh, a lot of your main points and talked a little bit about other things. Um, uh, one last thing that I want to throw in is uh, the fair trade. We, we didn't really talk about the fair trade. I just mentioned it, so I'm going to talk about that just a little bit before ending the uh, lecture. <coughs> so. We want to know why uh, the uh, fair trade is an ethical issue. Uh, fair trade is an ethical issue because it relates to the treatment of the firm's suppliers. Uh, the case is a good ex uh, uh, the case when it's fair trade, not fair, which is uh, in your. Uh, in your book, if I remember correctly, somewhere around page 33, yeah, 33. Um, so this is a, this case is a good example. If you read through it to uh, uh, understand it, uh, it's expected that if the firms are uh, try to serve uh, the needs of the stakeholders, they'll uh, be trying to have strong, positive relationships with the suppliers. As a result, uh, the ethical thing to do would be to move beyond uh, and uh, be positive based on uh, their treatment of all employees. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to just sort of, you know, go over that and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just uh, give you 
the basis of what fair trade is. The fair trade logo on numerous food products, including coffee, is an indication that the farmer at the coffee company received a fair wage for their work through higher uh, prices that they were charged for the product. Uh, and then they go on to give you an example. So I want you to read that and uh, uh, try to uh, glean a little understanding from that. And uh, I will be sending out messages to you throughout the week and uh, see if I can find something, uh, a video or something that you can uh, uh, see that gives you an idea of what this is talking about. So have a great uh, week and I will be in contact with you. If you have any problems or any questions, let me know. You have my information. Have a great weekend.